When you're building your Kotlin multi-platform apps, you might want to use some platform-specific APIs, like getting your device's location or working with files on your device's file system. And guess what? It's easy to do that. We're going to be looking at the expect actual mechanism, how to handle more complex use cases using interfaces for a more loosely coupled architecture and using dependency injection for more complex dependency graphs. Let's get started. First of all, you might not have to build things yourself. Kotlin Multiplatform has a thriving ecosystem, so ideally, check if a multiplatform library exists before writing your own. These libraries provide a common API that has an implementation for different platforms. There are already many such libraries, and you might find something for your use case in this great community curated list. But let's say you want to access some platform-specific APIs directly without using a library. How would you do that? Well, first you need to understand the concept of the expect actual mechanism. This mechanism defines the expect declaration in the common source set of a multi-platform module and the corresponding actual declaration with their implementations in every platform source set. When the Kotlin compiler then generates the code for a specific platform, it will merge the expect and corresponding actual declaration for the platform, so the correct implementation is called at runtime. It could look something like this. Say you are developing Android and iOS apps using Kotlin Multiplatform and you want to display the device's operating system name and version. This function needs to be implemented in a platform-specific way using platform APIs. Let's see how we can implement this. The common code here is the common source set called common main. And I'm creating the expect declaration for the get platform function. I'll be able to call this function from common Kotlin. Notice that I'm not including any implementation code. Next, in each platform specific source set, so Android and iOS, I give the actual implementation for the get platform function. I use the actual keyword to mark these as actual implementations. Note that it should be in the same package as the expect declaration. In your platform specific code, you can call common code as well as platform specific code, including your own. You just can't call platform specific code from other platforms, of course. In the Android source set called Android main, let's provide the Android implementation. Here I'm using the constant from the Android platform to give the platform specific implementation. Take a look at that. You can access all the functionality the Android platform has to offer. And in the iOS source set called iOS main, let's provide the iOS implementation. Let's use an iOS UIKit class called UI device. It allows us to get the current device's system name and version. You can also access all iOS platform APIs have to offer out of the box by just importing them straight into your Kotlin code. And if you are using iOS libraries, you can also auto generate bindings for them. Here's what it will look like. On my Android emulator with the latest SDK on, it would say running on Android 3.4. And on an iOS simulator with the latest version of iOS on, it would say running on iOS 18.1. So we see that the implementations do actually give different results for platform. You can declare actual declarations when you use intermediate source sets shared between different target platforms. It is possible to declare the actual declarations in the intermediate source sets instead of the platform source sets. The compiler will then use these actual declarations to produce the resulting code for the corresponding platforms. For example, here, Apple main is in the intermediate source set and we might just be able to put the actual declarations in this source set instead of each of the individual platform specific source sets for iOS, watchOS, macOS and tvOS. Of course this would be the intersection of the available APIs for these platforms. But what if our scenario is more complex than something we can handle with just a simple function? In these scenarios it's better to use interfaces. Let's transform our previous example to use this pattern. In the common source set, create the platform interface. 
Next, create platform-specific classes implementing the platform interface. In the Android source set, create the Android platform class that implements the platform interface. Override the name property so it will be Android and then the SDK version of the Android device. In the iOS source set, create the iOS platform class that implements the platform interface. Override the name property to use the UI kits UI device class to get the system name and system version of the iOS device. Of course, the benefit of writing against interfaces is that we can provide alternative implementations to our components, such as fakes for testing. For example, I can create the fake iOS platform class that implements the platform interface and hard code the name property. I can then test my component against that value. Likewise, if I had more than one implementation of retrieving the data, I could just provide additional implementations of the platform interface and have some logic decide which implementation to use. Because we are using interfaces, we can do more complex things like returning an object that can do more than one thing. Maybe it has another property or a function. To provide the appropriate platform implementations when you need a common interface, you can choose one of the following options. Expect actual factory functions, common entry points, and dependency injection frameworks. For this option, define an expect function that returns the value of this interface, and then define actual functions that return its implementations. Following on our previous example, in the common source set, I create an expect function called getPlatform that returns something of type platform. This acts as our factory function. Then in Android main, I create an actual function, getPlatform, that returns the Android platform instance. And in iOS main, I create an actual function that returns the iOS platform instance. If you control the entry points, you can construct implementations of each platform artifact without using expect and actual declarations. To do this, define the constructs in the shared Kotlin multi-platform module, but implement and instantiate them in the platform modules. Following on from our interface example, in the common main source set, define a function setup app that takes a parameter of type platform and performs all kinds of setup logic on it. In our Android app module, where you define your application, Override the onCreate function to call the setup app function, passing in the Android implementation of platform. Similarly, in our iOS app directory, where you create your SwiftUI application, override the init function to call the setup app function, passing in the iOS implementation of platform. Notice here that we're importing the shared module, which is our KMP shared module. You can think of this way of providing dependencies as shared code manual injection. While there are good DI frameworks out there, some prefer the simplicity of manual injection. The previous entry point technique works well for simple scenarios, but for more complex dependency graphs, we recommend you use a dependency injection framework of your choice, like Coin, Kotlin Inject, or Codeine. I'm showing you Coin in this example because it is popular, stable, and pretty easy to get the hang of. Following on from our interface example in the common main source set, define an expect property called platform module of type module. A coin type. A module is a space to gather coin definitions. Of course, I need to add the coin dependency to my project first. Then in the Android main source set, provide the actual platform module module and provide a value for it. Here we're using Coin's DSL to provide a singleton instance of Android platform for every injection request to Coin for something of type platform. Similarly, in the iOS main source set, provide the actual platform module module and provide a value for it. Here we are using Coin's DSL to provide a singleton instance of iOS platform for every injection request to Coin for something of type platform. Coin also requires that we initialize it when the application initializes. In the Android app module, override the application's onCreate function to call Coin's startCoin function with our expect actual property platform module. 
Next, for iOS, create a file called coinhelpo.kt in iOS main. Define a method initcoin in this file that calls coin's start coin function with our expect actual property platform module. Then, call the top level function initcoin from the SwiftUI app's init function. This will ensure coin is correctly initialized and ready for use in the rest of the application. You'll notice that I needed to change the call from initcoin to coinhelperkt.doinitcoin. This is because of Kotlin Swift interoperability requirements. I needed to proceed the function name with a file name. So coinhelper.kt becomes coinhelperkt as this is a top level function. And in it is a Swift keyword, so we needed to call the initcoin function as do initcoin instead. Finally, it's time to inject the dependencies into our components. In the Android app module, add a property called platform to the main activity class that we get by injection from the coin framework. For iOS, in iOS main and the coinhelper.kt file, add a class called Coin helper that implements the coin component interface. This class has a property called platform that we get by injection from the coin framework. Perhaps you're wondering, what about the other types of Kotlin declarations? Good question. The expect actual keywords can be applied to other Kotlin declarations, such as classes, interfaces, enumerations, properties, and annotations. But it's important to note that some of these, like classes, are still in beta. Most of the time, the most straightforward way, however, is to use expect actual functions or for more complex cases, use interfaces with their implementation injected by a dependency injection framework. Hopefully by now you have a better idea of the different techniques for accessing platform specific APIs in Kotlin multi-platform apps. For many cases, you can write simple expect actual declarations, but you've also seen that if you want to provide multiple implementations per platform, you can use interfaces. You've also seen that you can use a dependency injection framework to support more de complicated dependency graphs. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and have a nice Kotlin.